today we're talking about approaching Radha and Krishna to, to do that one must approach Lord Chaitanya and uh, Prabhu Nityananda and that's our general topic uh, and uh, I, I think maybe we could just start with you know we have our ISPA and we are uh, you know a branch of the Chaitanya tree and and then, of course, Srila Prabhupada is this preeminent person who has brought Krishna consciousness to the world. Yet there's other groups and sects in India, et cetera, et cetera. And, you know, we belong to the same category, yet at the same time, I think we're uniquely different. So maybe you could just describe the situation that we have uh, uh, in this time as it relates to other sects and other uh, uh, organizations that uh, portray Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. <clears throat> Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is a unique figure uh, among all the numerous saints and uh, acharyas in uh, uh, India. There are so many different sects, so many different lines of disciplic succession. But uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is truly, objectively speaking, is very, very unique. And uh, uh, we, considering the extent and the influence of his personality uh, and uh, the uh, really, uh, I mean, significant input of uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and so many other angles, uh, considering all this, uh, we, uh, following the footsteps of our acharyas, uh, declare very boldly that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is not just an ordinary saint, not even a uh, very uh, unique saint. He is God himself. <laughs> but, uh, of course, uh, we have so many other different sects and uh, lines uh, in India who also declare their founder as God or as an avatar of God or, you know, there is Swami Narayan, there's so many different, different, different uh, sects. Uh, so what is the difference between us and other people who also declare the founder of their faith as God? Uh, the difference is that Lord Chaitanya did come, but he didn't come to establish himself as God. He gave us uh, the true object of worship, uh, Krishna. We're chanting Krishna's name, and uh, the direct followers of Lord Chaitanya, six Gaswamis of Vrindavan, uh, they didn't emphasize uh, Chaitanya's divinity. Of course, uh, Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami very clearly delineated it in Chaitanya Charitamrita, uh, giving the key to all the writings of Goswamis. But uh, what is unique about Lord Chaitanya is that he doesn't promote himself. He gives us uh, worship of Krishna, uh, and Krishna is uh, universally accepted as the Supreme Personality of Godhead. But of course, Lord Chaitanya, besides promoting Krishna as the supreme object of worship, uh, also gives a very unique uh, tweak or a very unique angle of vision to Krishna, which we will probably talk a little later. So our uniqueness is that Lord Chaitanya is God, and uh, we can speak about this for a long time, uh, but being God himself, uh, being the Supreme Personality of God himself, he doesn't promote himself. He promotes worship of Krishna and chanting of Krishna's name. In this way, we're different from other people who are uh, just declaring their founders as, as God and uh, basically worship uh, this founder <clears throat> with some Mayavada, uh, Mayavada accent. So uh, even though Lord Chaitanya did not declare himself as God, and I think maybe even refused anybody who would say such a thing, uh, and he's putting forth Radha and Krishna as the object of our worship, still we need Lord 
Lord Chaitanya, uh, in, in a sense that we we have to approach Him. So, how does that work? I mean, why why is that? What is behind approaching Lord Chaitanya and Prabhu Nityananda to be able to worship Radha and Krishna? See, Lord Krishna came five thousand years ago, and uh, he basically showed. Uh, the amazing picture of the spiritual world. He revealed a very amazing relationship which are there, which are based on spontaneous love. Uh, but even though he revealed this, and uh, Sukadev Goswami, Srila Vyasadev, uh, depicted all this in Srimad Bhagavatam in a very comprehensive and a very uh, elaborate way, uh, nevertheless, uh, this thing remained a secret. It's really amazing. For us, we are more or less taking it for, for granted because Lord Chaitanya is there and he revealed all these secrets. But before Lord Chaitanya, even though Srimad Bhagavatam was there, even though people worshipped Krishna, uh, but uh, the worship of Krishna was either mixed uh, with worship of Lord Narayan, uh, like in Sri Sampradaya, they worship Krishna. They respect Krishna very much, but they think he is just an avatar of Lord Narayan. Uh, and uh, in uh, Madhva line, they also worship Krishna. But uh, the mood of worship is definitely not exactly the same as the mood depicted by Sukadev Goswami in Srimad Bhagavatam. It's amazing how Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he came and he revealed all these truths in a very... A simple way, and for us it's so obvious. For us it's almost uh, <laughs> almost unbelievable that other people couldn't understand this, even though it's so clearly described. Uh, it was Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself, and only Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who uh, said that uh, God is rasa, even though it's there in Taitiri Upanishad, rasa vai saha. Uh, very clearly said in the very beginning of Srimad Bhagavatam, in the third verse of Srimad Bhagavatam, uh, it is said, Pibata Bhagavatam Rasa Malayam. Srimad Bhagavatam is the manifestation of Rasa, it's the highest extent of Rasa. But nobody before Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu uh, even thought about this. Nobody uh, explained Srimad Bhagavatam from this point of view. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Uh, gave us the most wonderful understanding of the most wonderful scripture which is there, which was somehow or other hidden. That's why we can only really understand everything which is there uh, through Lord Chaitanya. Without Lord Chaitanya, we are helpless. Either we will uh, go around about or we will have very mixed conception of Krishna. Only through Lord Chaitanya we can have conception of Lord Krishna, which is truly the message of uh, Srimad Bhagavatam. Uh, and this is very clearly established by Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami in Chaitanya Charitamrita. He said, if you want to know the secrets of Srimad Bhagavatam, you should go to the follower of Lord Chaitanya, sit with him uh, at his feet and listen how he explains Srimad Bhagavatam. There is no other way to understand Srimad Bhagavatam. So, and there is no other way to understand Krishna. So, uh, Lord Chaitanya essentially revealed the Bhagavatam, I think, is what you're saying. Yeah, Lord Chaitanya revealed the rasas of Bhagavatam. The uh, tattva of Bhagavatam, many people, philosophy of Bhagavatam, many people understood, but uh, rasas of Bhagavatam, how Srimad Bhagavatam is about rasa, is about this nectarian taste of relationship between the Supreme Lord and the souls in Vrindavan and the highest realm of the spiritual world. That was not known. That was really a hidden secret. Mm. So, uh, maybe you could elaborate uh, what elements of the Bhagavatam that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu revealed and, and brought forth to us? Uh, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu basically uh, in his explanations, uh, especially to Rupa Goswami, he 
explain the development of rasa, which is described especially in the 10th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. How the 10th canto of, of Srimad Bhagavatam gradually uh, describes this development of uh, dormant love uh, in the soul, starting with Purva Rag. And uh, of course, before that, he explained Vatsalya Rasa, then he explained Sakya Rasa, uh, and then ultimately he explained Madhurya Rasa, and before that, Dasya Rasa to a certain extent. So, uh, he, you know, it was Lord Chaitanya himself who for the first time in the history of uh, spiritual, uh, s- spiritual history of the world, uh, who said that bhakti is rasa. Uh, the, there was people who were uh, propounding philosophy through Vedas and through Srimad Bhagavatam and through Mahabharata, explaining dharma and everything else. And there were people who were uh, explaining rasa. Uh, but Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he for the first time came and he said that Srimad Bhagavatam is about rasa and explained Srimad Bhagavatam, especially the 10th canto uh, of Srimad Bhagavatam from this vantage point, from the point of view of rasa, of relationship, or of love. And in this way, he, uh, he revealed to the world that uh, the highest message of the Vedas is love, is personal love to, uh, to Krishna. So that's unique, and that's nowhere. And um, uh, he himself was experiencing it and by experiencing it, he gave uh, this experience to Srila Rupa Goswami, who revealed it in his books, uh, like Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu and then sequel of Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, Ujjvala Nilamani. So that's the unique contribution. Now, uh, maybe you could elaborate on a few of these uh, unique elements uh, that have been then portrayed. Uh, we have Madhurya Rasa, we have Radharani, who is the highest, uh, different examples. Give us, drill, drill down a bit into <laughs> this uniqueness. Okay, so it's, it's very interesting because in Vrindavan also many people, they worship Radha and Krishna. Uh, uh, you know, in, in other place of India, uh, let's say, in Udupi, people, they're not so much even familiar with Radharani. They don't know her. Uh, in Vrindavan, many people worship Radha and Krishna, but uh, their worship is still different. Uh, it would not be improper to say that their conception of Radha and Krishna is to a greater extent borrowed from Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's understanding. Uh, but uh, even though they borrowed this conception, still uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's concept of Radha and Krishna is absolutely unique. Uh, first of all, he said that the supreme divinity is not Krishna. The supreme divinity is Radha and Krishna. Moreover, he said that the supreme divinity is not even Radha and Krishna. The supreme divinity is the love which bounds Radha and Krishna. <laughs> because he is the combined incarnation of Radha and Krishna. And then uh, he said that Vrindavan is the supreme, uh, Vrindavan is the supreme abode of, this, of Krishna. The Vraj is the supreme abode of Krishna. And um, uh, Madhuri Rasa is the highest of all Rasas. Uh, it is very clear. For us, it's very clear. For us, it's almost, uh, you know, common sense to say this, but it's not so uh, common for other people. For other people, it's still something completely new. And then he said even more amazing thing, because many people, like even now in Vrindavan, they worship Radha and Krishna, but they worship Radha and Krishna as married couple. Uh, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu uh, came and very boldly in conservative India, of medieval India 500 years ago, India was quite conservative. He very boldly said that the highest relationship with the absolute truth is of relationship of, you know, paramour, uh, this 
quote unquote illicit relationship. <laughs> so this Paraki Rasa, he explained that the highest, uh, highest spiritual essence, the spiritual you know message of Srimad Bhagavatam is Paraki Rasa, which is going on eternally in the spiritual realm. And then moreover, not only this, he said that it's not only uh, Radha and Krishna, he said that there are so many other uh, companions of uh, Radha who are uh, also engaged and participating in this Leela. And this is also unique for Lord Chaitanya, his concept, uh, that this uh, uh, love between Radha and Krishna cannot achieve its pinnacle point if there is uh, no other participants in this relationship. Therefore, uh, we all have place in this relationship. <laughs> we all can contribute to this relationship. And that's Unata uh, Ujvala Rasa, which Lord Chaitanya uh, came to give. And Srila Rupa Goswami very boldly says that for a long time, nobody has given this. It's only Lord Chaitanya gave this. And still, even today, uh, only Lord Chaitanya gives this. Nobody else uh, reveals all these secrets. Nobody else even comes close uh, to revealing this highest secrets of spiritual world. <laughs> so, so just just for me to be clear, and maybe for some of our audience, could you just define Madhurya Rasa? Could you define Varakya Rasa? Are these different uh, words or the same word for the same thing? It, Try, try okay. to define that better for us. Okay. Okay. Uh, no, it's not the same word. It's different word. You know, we know that there are uh, five primary rasas, or rather four primary rasas. Lord Chaitanya specifically, in Chaitanya Charitamrita, Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami says that uh, uh, he's coming to this world to propagate these four primary rasas, which are most prominent in Vrindavan. Dasya Rasa, the relationship of servant, which is actually not so prominent in Vrindavan because in Vrindavan uh, there is no servants of Krishna. In Vrindavan there are servants of Nanda Maharaj. <laughs> and uh, they also serve Krishna, but by the way. <laughs> so, uh, because in Vrindavan uh, the sweetness rules supreme. Then, of course, there is Vatsalya Rasa or Sakya Rasa, the relationship of friendship. This is the second Rasa, which is very prominent in Vrindavan and uh, nowhere to be found uh, in such a pure and intimate form as in Vrindavan, when the, uh, you know, cowhead boys, they're uh, riding on Krishna's shoulders. You know, who can imagine this? This is complete sacrilege for, <laughs> for any other religion to say that, you know, uh, my goal in life is to ride on God's shoulders <laughs> and to defeat him in, in fight. This is what uh, his friends are doing. And then, of course, uh, Vatsalya Rasa, when uh, his mother is uh, uh, punishing him, and binding him and chasing uh, after him with the stick in her hand. <laughs> uh, this is uh, also quite unique. You know, if you take the moods of our religion, of other religions, how they cultivate the mood, it's quite, I mean, quite unusual <laughs> to say that this is, this is what you're supposed to do. <laughs> And this is all, uh, these three rasas which we described so far, uh, they all uh, called Madhurya because Madhurya sweetness eclipses uh, the majesty of the Lord. Uh, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, why Vrindavan is the highest abode of the Lord? Because here uh, the sweetness of the Lord is so strong that it completely eclipses uh, his majesty and therefore it allows the uh, most intimate relationship between the Lord and living entities. And the closest possible relationship is Sridhara 
Sringara rasa or Manduri rasa, the relationship uh, like uh, husband and wife, not exactly husband and wife, like young boy and like uh, and young girl. And when this relationship are uh, outside of wedding, it's called parakia rasa. Parakia rasa means uh, relationship of paramour. Uh, between a uh, young girl and a uh, young boy. So this all completely unique concepts, which are there in Srimad Bhagavatam. But even in Srimad Bhagavatam, Shukadev Goswami, he kind of, you know, he's not very explicit about them. He is hinting, uh, of course, uh, about this. He, he doesn't even uh, name Srimati Radharani. Uh, because her name is so sacred. But Lord Chaitanya, he said, no, uh, nobody is qualified to understand this, therefore I will reveal it to everyone. That was his logic. <laughs> That's how he uh, came to reveal all these highest impossible secrets. So Maharaj, uh, maybe we take a person like me, uh, not not really the most fallen from the point of view that I'm just common and uh, uh, you know maybe only the the advanced devotees can say that they're most fallen because they have realization I, I'm just common and in the meantime somehow or other uh, at a young age I'm I'm brought into this understanding and little by little I still try to become a devotee. And over here is something so high, so high, the, the complete surrender and the complete devotion and the, the you, it gets so high that you, you, you even forget that Krishna is even God. Uh, how does this work? How does such a fallen person such as I have any hope or any chance to attain this, uh, this, this level of devotion? Well, <laughs> uh, sometimes I also have, I mean, oftentimes I have these doubts. <laughs> How is that possible? But uh, that's called mercy. Mercy means that uh, you give something uh, to those who don't deserve it. So it is possible by Lord Chaitanya's mercy, but uh, there is a trick. Uh, you know, Lord Chaitanya came and uh, he gives this to those people who develop uh, the service mood uh, to him. And service mood in one sense is simple. Uh, to enter into service relationship. Dasya rasa is very straightforward and very simple. Uh, and anyone, even, uh, you know, the most fallen people, they understand, you know, what service mood means. So, uh, and Lord Chaitanya is doing this, uh, but uh, when we serve Lord Chaitanya in this quote unquote simple rasa, uh, relatively speaking, uh, then, uh, as Prabodhananda Saraswati uh, Prabhupada said, uh, all of a sudden the ocean of uh, the highest and most subtle rasas of Vrindavan uh, will be revealed within your heart. There is a very important verse in his Chaitanya Chandramrita where he explains this mechanism. He says, Yatha yatha gaura padara vinde, vindete bhaktim krita punya rasim. He said, if you start serving Lord Gauranga, Gaura, the lotus feet of Lord Gaura, if you serve his mission, if you serve the Sankirtana mission, if you participate in this movement, Yatha yatha gaura padara vinde, vindete bhaktim krita punya rasim. After, you know, um, uh, amassing a lot of pious credits. Tathata tat sarpati hridya kasmat radapadam bhaja sukhambhurasim. He said, uh, all of a sudden you will 
find out that within your heart, the ocean of uh, Vrindavana Rasa or Radha, uh, Rasa of Radha and Krishna uh, will open. All of a sudden, uh, akasmat, akasmat means unexpectedly. <laughs> so uh, that's, uh, that's the beauty. You know, to enter into very complex relationship, you have to be very pure. You know, uh, we don't definitely don't have qualification to enter into this. You know, we, if we start chasing Krishna with stick in our hand, I'm not sure if he will like it. <laughs> Most probably not. <laughs> if we'll try to, <laughs> to climb over the shoulders of a deity, uh, it will be a big apparada. <laughs> Uh, so what to speak about uh, intimate relationship uh, of paramour? You know, we are too gross to enter this. Therefore, Lord Chaitanya comes and he says, just serve me. Just develop this Dasya Rasa to this Sankirtana movement, which is my movement. Uh, just become the servant of this movement. And by serving this movement, uh, you will purify your heart and uh, you will prepare your heart. Uh, and then ultimately when your heart is ready, uh, when it becomes the proper receptacle for all these rasas, I will reveal these rasas to you. That's the mercy of Lord Chaitanya. This is how we should go about it. So then to develop this service mood to Lord Chaitanya, what, what do we do then? Hmm. Well, basically, it's simple. Srila Prabhupada came and he said uh, that, uh, you know, this is the movement of Lord Chaitanya. You preach. You try to spread this movement. You chant the holy name. The holy name, actually, chanting of the holy name is the basis, the foundation of our service to Lord Chaitanya. Lord Chaitanya came to teach us this simple process. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. And if I understand uh, the inner meaning of uh, this process, what we ultimately have to achieve, and if we give this to other people, if we spread the Sankirtana movement uh, by distributing Prabhupada's books, by participating in Harinams, by taking part in uh, other uh, elements of Prabhupada's mission, which is the replica of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mission in uh, today's modern world. Uh, if we do this, or now if we preach in the internet, uh, that's all uh, service. And if we do it in a service mood, of course, uh, it may be externally service and we use it for our uh, aggrandizement for our, you know, whatever, for our selfish motives. But if we do it in, with a sincere heart, if we uh, preach Lord Chaitanya's mission as it is, if we serve Srila Prabhupada uh, how he wanted us to serve, if, if we develop this service mood instead of mood of enjoyment, uh, then definitely we will get mercy. There is no doubt about it. This is again and again and again stressed by Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami in Chaitanya Charitamrita. Uh, sometimes it's difficult uh, to keep up this process. Sometimes we get stuck. We get into a complacency of, okay, I've chanted my rounds. Okay, I've done some service. Now we go to the next day. Then we go to the next day, and before you know it, you 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 know uh, <laughs> yeah. thread together ten years, and you say, uh, "What what progress have I made? How how do we stay on this progressive? Mm. Every day should be a dynamic day of making more progress. What what do we do to do that?" Mm. It's interesting, Shila Jiva Goswami, and in, in his. Uh, elaborate commentary to this Anarpita Charinchirat verse, he says a very interesting thing. He said that everyone is eligible to get mercy of Lord Chaitanya uh, um, except for three types of uh, people who, are, who have cheating propensities. 
it says that there are three kinds of cheaters and they are deprived of Lord Chaitanya's mercy. It said the first type of uh, uh, cheaters is dhana kapati. Dhana kapati is uh, this is those people who, who re really, you know, who, who are in the position to help a preaching movement, who are in the position to contribute something to the preaching movement, but they are very stingy, they are cripponous, and they don't give uh, support. Srila Prabhupada, uh, he oftentimes uh, stressed this point. He said that, uh, you know, we are movement and we require, we require financial support, we require organizational support, we require all, all kinds of supports uh, to exist in this world. And if people, they are lazy or uh, slow in this regard or stingy and they think, you know, yes, I'm chanting my rounds and that's it. Uh, you know, they, they heard about Lord Chaitanya, they even maybe develop some faith in Lord Chaitanya, but if they're not really sincerely participating in this movement by supporting this movement, uh, they will be cheated and they will not ultimately get prema. <laughs> he said, second kind of cheaters is balakapati. Balakapati means those people who have strengths, bala means strength, uh, but uh, they are not really using full strengths which they have uh, in, again, participating in this movement. Uh, you know, they are not uh, using their physical strength. And they say, you know, it's, it's like, you know, I, I have my minimum, four rounds. Okay, five rounds, not more. Okay, 16 rounds, but not more. <laughs> uh, or whatever, you know, uh, Sankirtan movement is going on and uh, they do have capacity to take part in uh, kirtan, but uh, they're somehow rather lazy. They don't want to use their strength. Uh, this is the second kind of cheaters who are not really wholeheartedly participating in this movement uh, by trying to help this movement uh, by, you know, by their physical strength. Uh, but the most important, the third kind of cheaters uh, Srila Jiva Goswami calls them prema kapati. Prema kapati means uh, they don't have prema, but they think that they have prema. <laughs> and they're not really uh, striving to get prema. They're looking in their heart and they know that the heart is empty. But at the same time, they, you know, go around, pose around and say, you know, I'm the great devotee, I'm Maharaj. I'm preacher, I'm this, I'm that. So uh, if they don't have this desperate desire, I want to get this mercy of Lord Chaitanya, then the mercy will not come. So basically, if uh, answering your question, what do we do every day of our life? First of all, we have to really, uh, by introspection, understand that these cheating propensities are there within our heart. And uh, by associating with those people who are free from these cheating propensities, who really fully participating in this movement, like your good self, I know how much time you are... Oh, oh okay, I will not embarrass you, <laughs> but I really know, <laughs> I really know how much, you know, of your time, of your energy, of your whatever, you know, I, I will not say more. <laughs> Uh, uh, you know, so many wonderful examples we have of people who are really sincerely uh, investing their heart into this uh, movement. And if associating with them, then gradually, gradually, uh, we will get the same taste. We will see how they're doing this and how they are happy by doing this and how they develop uh, amazing qualities because they're doing this. So basically, to do it, we have to associate with those people who are free from these uh, propensities, cheating propensities. Mm. 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 And, and on this path, there's so many opportunities, positively, but then there's so many 
opportunities to just make mistakes and create an offense or just, you know, just how, what, what do we do if we're making mistakes? And, and half the time we don't even know if we're making mistakes. <laughs> it's, it's almost like puzzling, with, you know, what to do, but then don't do, don't make a mistake, but you don't even know if you're making a mistake. How does the Lord treat us when we make these mistakes? Well, you know, the Lila of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is called Audarya Lila. Audarya Lila means very, you know, magnanimous Lila. He is not really uh, taking seriously our mistakes as long as we have some sincerity. If he would start, you know, really... <laughs> judging us according to our capacities, we wouldn't have no hope. And of course, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself, sometimes he was quite strict and he was correcting mistakes or sometimes he was not even forgiving mistakes. Like in case of Chota Haridas, he was very strict in this sense. But, uh, you know, luckily for us, he also delegated a lot of power to Lord Nityananda, and he said, okay, you know, uh, I'm a sannyasi, I will be strict. You go to these people and you give them everything, you know, without considering their faults. Like uh, Gorgavinda Maharaj in one of his uh, lectures, he said that Lord Chaitanya, he is distributing love of God, but with one hand. And Lord Nityananda with two hands is doing it. So Lord, Chait Lord Chaitanya is still somewhat restricted. And uh, yes, sometimes it's um, when we uh, read about this Lila's like uh, with Chota Haridas or Lila with Mukunda, how he was punishing Mukunda for uh, his, him being not so chaste and so on and so forth, uh, we may become a little afraid. Uh, but... Uh, Srila Prabhupada said, you know, there is Lord Nityananda, just follow Lord Nityananda, and basically it means preach. Preach unrestrictedly. And then you will get mercy of Lord Chaitanya. That's how it works. Uh, through Lord Nityananda, who is very approachable, uh, we get the mercy of Lord Chaitanya, like Jagai and Madai. Jagai and Madai, because they somehow or other came in contact with Lord Nityananda, Ultimately, they got the mercy of Lord Chaitanya, uh, not without a drama in between, but nevertheless. <laughs> uh, and then when we get the mercy of Lord Chaitanya, we get the mercy of Radha and Krishna. That's how it works. And uh, uh, Srila Prabhupada himself, you know, there was, there was a story uh, when one of his disciples, wayward disciples, was doing one mistake after another, after another, gross mistakes. And Prabhupada was forgiving and forgiving and forgiving. Really serious, gross mistakes. <laughs> and then ultimately, Tamal Krishna Maharaj came to him and he said, Srila Prabhupada, it's too much. You cannot do this. <laughs> you cannot forgive him. <laughs> and Prabhupada looked at him and said to him, you don't know the extent of the mercy of Lord Nityananda. <laughs> So basically, Srila Prabhupada came as the representative of Lord Nityananda, and therefore he established in all of our temples uh, Gornitai. And we can come, and sometimes, you know, I'm speaking about myself, sometimes when I come to uh, Gornitai, I'm a little ashamed to look at the face of Lord Chaitanya, but I'm looking at Lord Nityananda, <laughs> and, and he's smiling. <laughs> So, and I know uh, I still have some hope, <laughs> despite of all my so, deficiencies. So, specifically, why did Srila Prabhupada establish Gordi type worship? Uh, basically, to stress this point that we are preaching movement, and by serving this preaching movement, we are pleasing Lord Nityananda, because Lord Nityananda was delegated by Lord Chaitanya uh, to preach. Uh, and if we uh, you know, preaching the glory of Lord Chaitanya like Lord Nityananda did. What was Lord Nityananda's preaching? His preaching was to preach the glory of Lord Chaitanya. 
And, you know, by serving Lord Nityananda uh, means preaching uh, the glory of Lord Chaitanya, distributing Chaitanya Charitamrita, Srimad Bhagavatam, uh, taking part in Harinams and everything else. You know, we are getting the mercy of Lord Chaitanya. And therefore, uh, Srila Prabhupada established this uh, two transcendental brothers uh, to us to remind in, in every temple, to remind that we are preaching movement. We don't have any other hope. You know, if we sit down and try to chant uh, three lakhs of holy names, or if we try to do some bhajan, or if we try to do something else, uh, it probably will not work. But uh, if we have... It definitely and, changes our consciousness. I mean, in one sense, we're saying uh, we are preaching to please the Lord, but we are also preaching to change ourselves. Of course, by preaching, by preaching others, we we also understand something, and uh, imperceptibly, uh, this preaching. You know, any Sankirtan devotees. I heard so many stories when. Uh, when they, you know, develop this mood, serving mood, uh, immediately they feel amazing results and how uh, Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda reciprocates with them. So mm, we're changing our consciousness, that's for sure. That's for sure. And uh, we're getting the mercy uh, of Lord Nityananda and we're getting mercy of Srila Prabhupada. He is even more merciful. He, he said it uh, in a number of occasions. He said that, you know, Lord Chaitanya, he could, uh, he could be strict. Uh, I, cannot, I cannot be strict. <laughs> I, uh, so he is very merciful. If we help, if, it, the main thing is to develop this service mood. Because our main problem in this material world is this enjoyment the mood of enjoyment. If we change this through the serving of this Sankirtan mission uh, or ISKCON mission, uh, you know, we develop service mood and everything else is based. This is the foundation for everything else. All other very subtle and uh, elevated subject matters, they will be revealed just by this service mood. Okay, Maharaj, uh, we're just about uh, getting to the end of our time. Uh, I guess I maybe just have one more question. It might be a difficult question uh, for me to form in my mind. Uh, but I'm thinking that this business of going out and spreading Krishna consciousness, going out and preaching, we are essentially going to a person who doesn't know anything about Krishna and introducing that person to Krishna and participating in reuniting the Lord with his part and parcels. And that, that act, what, what spiritually is being represented by that action? <clears throat> See, uh, Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati, spiritual master of Srila Prabhupada, uh, he once said a very beautiful thing. He said that the last verse of Bhagavad Gita, Sarva Dharman Paritya Mame Kam Sharanam Raja, Aham Tvam Sarva Pate Biyal Moksha Shyami Masu Chaha. He said that the last verse of Bhagavad Gita is actually uh, the sound of Krishna's flute, who is calling uh, souls to participate uh, in his rasa dance. <laughs> it's a very beautiful uh, comparison or very beautiful statement and very deep philosophical statement. Krishna wants uh, the conditioned soul to come to them, to, to him. And therefore, he, that's the last verse of Bhagavad Gita. He's, 
his song, you know, he's singing this, and the very last note, which is the most important, he says, come to me, come to me, surrender unto me. <laughs> so, and then uh, after that, uh, Sanjaya, who is speaking Bhagavad Gita, he said, uh, no, oh, Chris, sorry, Krishna himself, he says, that uh, the one who preaches this message to uh, other people, uh, he is the most intimate and most close servant of mine. There was, uh, there is nobody who is more dear to me than somebody who is proclaiming this message to other people. So Krishna himself is very clear about this. He said, this is the most uh, intimate service which can be ever done. <laughs> uh, and if we do it in a proper mood, of course, uh, everything boils down to the proper mood which we develop uh, through our association and through reading Prabhupada's books and through so many other things. But if we're doing in a proper mood, in a, in a proper service mood, there is nothing more elevated than this. <laughs> so, and even Bhagavad Gita is the proof of this, what to speak about other. We want to thank you so much. <laughs> really appreciate your valuable time and your wonderful insight into this Chaitanya Charanamrita. Hare Krishna and glories to Srila Prabhupada. Thank you very much, Gopal Bhatta Prabhu. Thank you very much to everyone. Thank you. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Glories to Srila Prabhupada. Hare Krishna.